I asked the sales associate at the Home Depot to cut down one piece of three quarter inch pure bond plywood in half twice. He said yes, kicking off a lifelong friendship between the two of us. Unfortunately, when I arrived home, I realized he was a quarter of an inch off in his measurements. Abruptly ending our lifelong friendship, we had a good run. My design calls for a four x four grid across the entire surface of the pegboard. Every four inches on the center line, I'll be making a seven eighths of an inch in diameter hole using a Forstner bit, and that's what I'll be using to house the pegs. After a few holes, I realized this was going to be a very messy affair. So I put my shop vac next to the Forstner bit, and it sucked up about 90% of the shavings as they were coming out. And it just made this a much cleaner process. Even with clamping the pegboard tightly to another piece of plywood underneath, I was still getting a lot of tear out. Luckily, it's the back side, and that doesn't matter to me, but in the future, I'd like to avoid tear out if at all possible, and I'm not quite sure how. I'll be using my pneumatic brad nailer, wood glue, and an inch and a quarter brad nails to attach one by two maple trim to the outside of my pegboard. I mitered the corners of the trim at 45 degrees, and I will have the measurements on my website so you can make your own, or not. Finally, I filled in the holes using wood filler. I'm making my way around the perimeter of the pegboard and adjusting the length of my miter cuts as needed because things tend to change a little bit when you get to the last piece, for me anyway. Next up is the modern bench to go along with our pegboard. It mimics the same design of the pegboard in that I'm going to make a 4x4 grid on that. The difference is this is only 16 inches wide by 48 inches long. It's just enough space to get your hiney on, but not enough to block the hallway, which is perfect. I don't really have any tips for the sequence. It's kind of a nice artistic sequence with the sun setting. Drilling all of these holes really hurt my arms. Sadly, my shop vac stopped cooperating and wouldn't sit nicely on the table and suck up the wood chips. I fought the good fight like Ice Cube in the critically acclaimed 1997 hit Anaconda, but ultimately didn't have JLo to save me at the end, so I died. At least a little bit on the inside. I use the same method of attaching the trim to the bench as I did with the pegboard. I'm really not sure how this is going to hold up over time. I did use a lot of glue and the brad nails, but with people constantly sitting on it and putting weight on it, I really don't know how well it will hold. Luckily, it's mostly for my children to get in and out of the house for school and activities, but we'll see. I grabbed some extra plywood and I'll be cutting that into five inch strips to use as spacers under the legs. Industrial by Design sent me some 16 inch hairpin legs a few months ago and I figured this would be a good project to try these out on. I traced the top of the hairpin legs onto my plywood and I'll be cutting that out using my coping saw. I'm not good with my coping saw, but it doesn't have to look nice because it's hidden underneath the bench. I'll be attaching the spacers to the bottom of the bench using a lot of glue and clamps. Next, I'm going to pre-drill pilot holes using a slightly smaller drill bit than my screws and a ghetto stop guide using painter's tape. Finally, I'm going to attach the legs using an inch and a quarter wood screws. Now that the bench is completed, I need a way to hang my pegboard to the wall safely so that nobody gets killed. And a French cleat is the perfect way to do that. So I set my table saw to 45 degrees and I'm going to cut a one by four in half. One side will be attached to the pegboard and the other side will be attached to the wall. I'm countersinking and pre-drilling the holes and then I'll be attaching the cleat to the pegboard using one inch wood screws.
I'm marking out the studs on my wall and finding the height in which I want to hang this. The most important thing to keep in mind is that you want the cleat to be level and you want the cleat to fall in at least two studs for safety. Line your cleat up on the marks, pre-drill using a slightly smaller drill bit than your bolt. If your drill bit doesn't reach, take off the cleat, go all the way into the stud. Insert your ratchet bit, set the drill to low, and you're ready to roll. Attach the first bolt, level the cleat, and pre-drill your second hole. Finally, attach the second bolt to the wall, and we're ready to hang the pegboard. Check for level, and celebrate because we did it. And here's where you can have some fun. Cut your pegs to whatever length you want and put them wherever your heart desires. I even made a little floating shelf attaching two dowels to some scrap maple and plywood. And now I've placed to empty my pockets at the end of the day.